All right, we're going to take a brief break from the news headlines this morning to talk about a fascinating new book, one that explores schizophrenia through the lens of a real family. Hidden Valley Road introduces readers to the Galvin family, a family of 12, yes, 12 children. By the mid-1970s, six of the children, all boys, were diagnosed with schizophrenia, and the family genetics continue to play a pivotal role in understanding schizophrenia today. Robert Kolker is the investigative journalist who poured through medical records, personal diaries, and logged hundreds of hours speaking to Galvin family members. He joins us this morning from New York. Uh, Robert, thank you so much uh, for being here with us. Uh, right now, we're looking at the cover photo of the whole family on the staircase right now. If we can pull that up, there we go. Could you give us some context into who the Galvin family is? Because in terms of the family dynamic, you write, quote, being a member of the Galvin family was about either going insane yourself or watching your family go insane. That is a chilling reality for anyone to be faced with. Thank you. Thanks for having me on today. The, the cover photo that everyone's looking at here is really the before picture, really. Um, 11 of the 12 children are born, the, uh, or sorry, 10 of the 12 children are born. The 11th is in utero there uh, with Mimi Galvin, the mother, toward the top of the stairs. This is at the, the steps of the Grand Assembly Hall of the United States Air Force Academy, where Don, the father, was an instructor, and he also flew the Falcons at the football games. They were a high-profile family that really served as an example and model to everyone in their community. They were well known for having so many kids. And uh, then within a few years, it all started to come crashing down. We all know that schizophrenia, the onset is in the early 20s. And so the oldest of the 12 children started to exhibit symptoms in the late 60s. And by the mid 70s, the family was in tremendous crisis and they were not getting real help from the medical establishment, which, which was really typical for that period of time in uh, where the science was. Six, six of the 12 children would be diagnosed with schizophrenia, all of them boys, and all of them presented differently. As you said, Donald was the first, the most obvious. Joseph was the most self-aware. Matthew believed he was Paul McCartney and that his moods controlled the weather. How did their symptoms differ from each other? That was one of the big challenges of this book. I, I had the luxury of being able to speak with every surviving member of the Galvin family, including the three surviving mentally ill sons. And I was determined to make this not a book about people just uh, developing mental illness and disappearing. I wanted them to be human beings with their own sets of symptoms. And sure enough, they all manifested differently. Um, some were delusional, some were paranoid, some were catatonic, some were unstable. But, but really, the common denominator was they all were a stranger to their own emotions and to their own impulses. They all started doing things that they couldn't explain or understand. This family has been studied for four decades. Now, we know that there is some sort of hereditary link. It doesn't appear to be passed directly from parent to child. Uh, how has this one family's genetic makeup helped researchers learn more about schizophrenia? There's been a running debate about schizophrenia, which we still know so very little about. Um, we know it's hereditary, but we don't know how. A lot of people blame it on the environment as well. Some now in the era of epigenetics think that the genes are expressed by the environment, meaning that you might have a genetic vulnerability to schizophrenia, but that it might take something in the environment to trigger it, and people are looking for that trigger. A family like this represents a perfect little Petri dish that scientists can study. And it was not always fashionable to do so. The, the era of the Human Genome Project meant that most psychiatrists were looking population-wide for the hallmarks of every disease. But the Galvins have actually shined a light on the illness in a way that no one else can. And you have shined a light on the Galvin family in a tremendous way, as well as the disease itself. Robert Kolker, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.